uh, welcome you all to the next class on uh, inorganic chemistry of life, uh, principles and perspectives. So, in the previous class we have looked at uh, uh, reductase, uh, dinuclear cases and uh, ribonuclear reductase and also we have looked at the uh, rubrithrin which is a uh, the which decomposes the H2O2 to water, uh, both of these have uh, been looked at. So, having looked at some reductases and uh, we have looked at already oxygenases, now probably uh, it is a it is a logical to get into some uh, hydrolase or phosphate hydrolysis which is known as phosphatases. So, these are one of the things reasonably well understood or called purple acid phosphatase. Why the reason, uh, why the term purple? Uh, so, the purple comes from the color, acid from the pH, so acidic condition. So, these are purple acid phosphatases. And these are the, of course, the metal enzymes which are involved in uh, hydrolyzing the phosphate esters under acidic conditions. And, uh, okay. and if you look at their oxidized form, they are in purple in color. And particularly so, because you have the color is coming, the origin for the color is the charge transfer. And the charge transfer is from the tyrosine to the, um, to the ion uh, center or oxidized ion center. So, these are the kinds. And if you look at the, the, uh, the centers of these, uh, they are all composed of ion 3 plus. And the second metal ion could be iron 3 plus, could be zinc 2 plus, could be manganese 2 plus or magnesium 2 plus. And these are all found in different kinds of uh, species. So, and um, the iron 3 plus of course, is the uh, one which is conserved in all. The second metal ion is being replaced either by zinc or by manganese or by magnesium or by iron, uh, iron 3 plus 2. Okay? So, generally when you take this purple acid phosphatase and try to uh, use a mild reducing agent, they get into active form. So, that means active form has some reducing, but if you use a strong reducing agent, then they will break down uh, these uh, uh, dinuclear centers, the dissociation takes place, enzyme becomes um, uh, inactive and the solution becomes colorless. So, that means they are totally broken down. Okay. So, these are enzymes which are involved in hydrolyzing the phosphate ester bond uh, etcetera, etcetera. And I said there is their dinuclear one of them is iron 3 plus other than could be the either the iron 3 plus magnesium 2 plus or uh, manganese 2 plus or, or any of these things are possible depending upon the type of species. Now, let us look at some other species which are let us say eukaryotic species and the higher level which is mammalian. There is a large uh, proportion of the overlap of the amino acid between the eukaryotic species for purple acid phosphatases and mammalian purple acid phosphatases. On the other hand, if you try to look at the plant based uh, purple acid phosphatase with that of the mammalian purple acid phosphatase, there is a large difference. There is only 20 percent of the overlap you will find. So, between the eukaryotes and the mammalian there is a huge percentage of overlap of the amino acids and the sequence homology which is 70 to 80 percent, whereas there is only 20 percent of the sequence homology when you compare the purple acid phosphatases between the plants and the mammalian. Just like we have used the short form RNR for ribonucleotide directase, uh, let us use the short form of the PAP purple acid phosphatases. Okay, again, if you look at the, the metal uh, centers of these ones between the plants and the mammalian, there is a difference. So, mammalian PAP is uh, been isolated and purified to this point have been composed of iron, uh, where in the plants uh, the metallic uh, nucleus is composed of the iron uh, 3 plus and either the manganese or the zinc and that is where the difference comes diversity. So, the second ion in mammalian, second metal ion is in mammalian is still iron and in other kinds of things it changes to zinc and magnesium and manganese too and mostly found was zinc and manganese in case of the, uh, in case of the plant things. So, we have tried to look at the compositional metal ion compositional aspects 
and we also looked at the protein overlap, amino acid overlap. So this uh, eukaryote and the mammalian has a large overlap of amino acid and uh, there is a very little overlap between the plant and the mammalian one. And the greater difference is that the dinuclear center is primarily ion 3, ion 3 in case of mammalian and in case of the uh, uh, plants it is ion 3 and uh, magnesium or manganese or zinc. The mainly zinc and manganese are being found. So, we got some reasonable amount of uh, introductory aspects of the purple acid phosphatase, purple coming from the color in the oxidized form, acid coming from the, uh, the acidity of this medium and the phosphatase activity is a hydrolyzed phosphate ester hydrolysis of this one. So, therefore, these are very well understood purple acid phosphatase. So, you can see the reaction here, this is the phosphate ester and this is hydrolyzed to the alcohol and uh, phosphate. Okay, HPO42 minus is a phosphate counterpart and the alcohol counterpart. And when you condense them, you will get the phosphate ester, and this is what is happening. So, uh, so therefore, as I said, that um, you have the purple acid phosphatases having both the iron ion center or iron with uh, some other metal ion, it could be manganese or it could be zinc. So, you have shown both the cases. The enzyme is shown over there, you have different units connected together and then you have the activity going on at every dinuclear center is catalytically active. Whether this is a iron, iron iron dinuclear center or iron M2 plus dinuclear center where M2 plus is zinc 2 plus manganese 2 plus in some cases magnesium 2 plus 2. So, all of these. Now, let us look at uh, the iron iron. You have two histidines on one side. Uh, and on the other side one histidine we have already looked at and a tyrosine. So, this is the tyrosine which is involved in the charge transfer uh, transition that is happening. And this is again uh, conserved when you go to this the iron and the zinc uh, has got a very similar kind of a uh, binding centers and uh, uh, therefore, the iron center is preserved therefore, the purple color is still retained because of the tyrosine to the iron 3 charge transfer transitions. So, there is a, uh, the core iron core is very well preserved in spite of the amino acid sequence may have a greater overlap or may have a, a lesser overlap. Something like 70, 80 percent of great overlap or 20 percent of the overlap in both the cases it is there except that the second iron uh, center is replaced by the zinc center in this particular case. So, you can take this from the, the plants or other non uh, mammalian and mammalian kinds of things, but the reaction is the same. Okay? And uh, we, the, the two aspects that we have stressed now, one is the purple color, the other is the oxidized and the reduced forms of this. Let us try to understand this, how one studies this purple color, how one studies this uh, oxidized and reduced forms of this particularly when you take the mammalian case. Now, as I said already the, the purple color is coming from the LMCT ligand to metal charge transfer. So, this is basically ligand to metal charge transfer is called I'm, I talked to you in much early stage in this course. So, this is uh, ligand to metal charge transfer. So, in this case the ligand is uh, uh, tyrosine uh, is ligand and iron 3 of course, is the metal center. Okay. So, that is where we have ligand to metal charge transfer uh, tyrosine to the uh, tyrosine to the metal charge transfer. Okay, this charge transfer can be really recognized one is by looking at the absorption spectrum where you have a charge transfer spectra. Certain times these charge transfer band will also overlap with other bands therefore, you will not be able to make out. In such a case you can use a vibrational spectrum not a simple IR vibration not a simple FTIR, but you need to look at the uh, resonance Raman. Uh, spectrum. 
So, or or uh, is, is referred to uh, resonance Raman spectrum. So, what is uh, 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 Raman spectrum we know that it is vibrational those which are not found in the in the IR will be found in the uh, in the Raman spectrum we know all that. Now, what is the resonance Raman? So, the resonance Raman is the one where the Raman spectrum is measured under a resonance. What kind of resonance? The electron transition. So, electronic transition. So, you electronic transition. So, how would you get the electron transition? If you know the absorption band, you can um, excite the sample at that particular wavelength. So, in this case, there is a uh, absorption band at 514.5. So, suppose now you measure a Raman spectrum while exciting the sample at the 514.5 nanometer, then what you get? You get a, a, a Raman spectrum which is uh, the uh, vibrational Raman spectrum which is coupled with this a, a transition of the electronic transition. So, therefore, you have a electronic transition. So, this coupling with the vibrations. So, that is what you have in this. So, when it couples what will happen? The vibrational bands will become highly intense. So, when they become highly intense, you measure once the spectrum without this excitation, you measure the spectrum with the excitation, you will see the bands which are which are enhanced enhanced in the uh, uh, vibrational bands. So, from the enhanced vibrational bands, you can find out the couple, uh, coupling of that is there between the, um, the tyrosine and the neighboring. So, that is what is basically done in this uh, case. So, this uh, the purple acid uh, phosphatase and the pink iron uh, phosphatase, these are all seen as you can see so the bands uh, corresponding to the vibrational bands in that vicinity are uh, uh, identified to be the, uh, the enhanced one. So, from this uh, basically you can get the uh, tyrosinyl vibrations and then talk that there is a tyrosine bonded to the ion center and there is a charge transfer too. Okay. So, understand the resonance Raman uh, is the Raman spectrum under the uh, electronic excitation being continuously pumped in. And in this particular case 514.5 nanometer because the absorption takes place at that and so therefore, uh, the, um, in the tyrosine to LMCT uh, and this will enhance the tyrosinal vibrations. Okay. So, coupling with the vibrations and this leads to when it coupled it uh, gives the uh, enhancement, uh, enhancement uh, and in the uh, coupled uh, vibrational intensity. In other words, the intensity of those coupled bands will be increased, so that from that we can understand this. Now, we looked at let us look at uh, the reduced forms, uh, oxidized form, etcetera, etcetera. Uh, you can see that um, this we are of course referring to the iron ion case. Uh, the iron ion case, uh, there are two ions are there and uh, oxidized form and then into the reduced form too. So, in this this is the heterofarin, which is for the mammalian case. So, mammalian purple acid phosphorase will have both the metal centers as the ion. So, in this case, you can look at the uh, the purple acid phosphorase. Uh, at the 4.9 pH which is acidic pH and if you look at this particular EPR spectrum you can see the EPR spectrum is very characteristic of the rhombic type as is equal to half with the antiferromagnetic coupling of the uh, with the S2 uh, uh, S is equal to. Okay. So, the, the one center and the other center say which is S is equal to half other is S is equal to and that is where you have the coupling happening in this.
So, that coupling can be identified from this EPR spectra, but in this particular case you do not need to really know fully well how to analyze this, but just uh, the taking uh, into consideration uh, that is what is happening with these ones okay? and that is why you get the extra bands because of coupling this. Now, you can also look at their uh, proton NMR spectrum. Okay? So, proton NMR spectrum and uh, you have the, uh, the there are two of these are looked at the pink state and the purple state and the purple state is the completely oxidized state and the pink state will have the reduced also in that. In this the, the spectra were measured uh, in water and with the D 2 exchange to find out those groups which are uh, which are exchangeable and you see this particular uh, uh, resonance or a peak is disappeared when you add the D 2 O and that means that is the one where you have in the vicinity of uh, this uh, the metal center. And all of these are very much uh, shifted and uh, you see in this purple case oxidized you do not see much of a splitting kind of thing everything is broadened. And in the uh, in the pink form with one of the center being reduced then you can still see, but shifted this is called contact shift and these are going up to 100 ppm etc. Uh, in a proton enema going to beyond 15 ppm is nothing but the paramagnetic shift or contact shift and this is the contact shift. So, therefore, one can identify the, the tyrosine you know that um, uh, the charge transfer band, the oxidized reduced couplings etc. all of these can be identified by the EPR and the proton NMR we have already looked at in the earlier case the proton NMR you can have a contact shift, you can have a broadening of this all these we have looked at. And the proton to D, uh, water to D 2 O the proton uh, some of the protons will be exchangeable and those protons can be identified. So, therefore, their, their connectivity with this. Now, we looked at the general aspects of the purple acid phosphatase and the purple color the transition and oxidized reduced form. We looked at the comparison between the mammalian versus the plant mammalian versus the, uh, uh, the other kind of a, uh, organisms where the purple acid phosphatases are present. Now, let us look at uh, the uh, what are what is the role of these dimetallic uh, center. So, and here we have iron the second metal is let us say M and what is the role of this and we have already seen this center which is very well known. Now, this particular thing is involved uh, uh, see to have a reactivity uh, what is required this particular uh, phosphate ester must be cleaved at this stage uh, at this stage. So, that you get a hydrox uh, alcohol and the phosphate moiety. Okay. So, for that obviously, you need to have a binding followed by the uh, hydroxyl attack or nucleophilic attack or water attack on these ones and that is what happens. So, therefore, you have uh, the phosphate uh, ester O is bound to the one of the metal center and the other metal center in the active form there will be water converting into the OH and this OH is involved. So, that is why we are saying that, that uh, the, the activity starts in that and this OH is in proximity to the this OH is in proximity to the phosphate ester and that will bring a nucleophilic attack. And another aspect you should notice here is this phosphate ester is having secondary interactions to this uh, one of the histidine another histidine etcetera. So, what do you call this? The secondary interactions will basically recognize the phosphate ester and orients the phosphate ester. So, the phosphate ester has to be oriented in such a way that this binds to the uh, metal center and the phosphorus center is in the close proximity. Uh, so, which is in within the range of two and a half to three angstroms or so. Uh, so, so, therefore, you can have a nucleophilic attack taking place in this and that is what precisely happens. So, you can uh, you have uh, hydroxyl which is reacting with this. So, and the phosphate ester binding to one of the metal center, the other metal center will provide the nucleophile. So, therefore, one is 
at a kind of a uh, substrate binding or is the, the catalytic. So, you can say. So, within the same binuclear center one acts as a substrate binding other acts as a catalytic center both together. So, we can say this is the structural uh, kind of a one and this is the catalytic one. So, and this provides the hydroxyl attack and in the, during the hydroxyl attack you will find uh, the intermediate where the uh, uh, sorry uh, the, the intermediate where this phosphorus center with the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 you know this penta coordinated or pentavalent phosphorus center. So, pentavalent phosphorus center is a transition state kind of thing and so attack and this now that will be further uh, breaking this uh, particular uh, group and leaves out uh, uh, this particular OR uh, going out and for these the proton sources uh, are coming from these particular residues. So, therefore, there is a one is these residues are helping in recognizing the phosphate these residues in the wave neighbor are also helping protonation deprotonation aspects too. So, therefore, secondary interactions in an enzyme or metalloenzyme are also very important. It is not only primary where the metal ion is bound the secondary interactions are also. So, that will give the ROH out and then H minus will give. So, you can have so in presence of the phosphate you can go back phosphate ester you can go back this too. Okay. So, you can see so one is the binding other is the nucleophilic attack and transition state and then further hydrolysis and breaking the alcohol and uh, the next step is replacing the phosphate moiety by the incoming uh, 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 phosphate ester. So, we have not shown the other part. Now, if there is no incoming phosphate ester then you can add water the water will displace and will come. So, uh, we can do. So, this will be continuously happening. So, that is why it is shown over there. Okay. Uh, phosphate ester binding the transition state uh, for the hydrolysis of this and the ROH going out and the in entry of the phosphate ester replacing the phosphate moiety HPO4 2 minus moiety. So, this, this is continuous and you can see one of that particular intermediate kind of the binding center can be seen over there. Okay, and this is the center. So, now we understand uh, the purple acid phosphatase is a hydrolytic kind of a activity and there is no redox activity involved. So, out of the two metal centers one metal center is involved in the binding the other metal center involved in providing the hydroxide and then uh, stabilizing or favoring through the formation of the uh, transition state and then the water attack and then those things. So, and the secondary uh, these groups are involved in the protonation recognition as well as the protonation deprotonation steps in this too. Okay, so, this uh, comes to one of the uh, aspects of this um, uh, hydrolysis parts of it. Then we also have some reductases where the reductase is not by the binuclear ion center, but these are by the heme reductases. So, we have already looked at the non heme reductase which is non heme reductase ribonucleic reductase itself is a non heme reductase because the two ion centers which are present are no heme is there in this. So, we will look at uh, uh, in this particular case the uh, reduction of uh, 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 NO2 to NO nitrite reductase as well as uh, NO2 to NH3 where you require more number of electrons and for nitrite to nit uh, and nitric oxide you require only less number of because you are removing only one O. In the other case you are removing both the O's and putting hydrogens and therefore making into ammonia. So, these are the two cases we will look at under the non uh, under the heme reductases. Okay, let us take the first part is the nitrite reductase in this the nitrate reductase uh, uh, uses the uh, two uh, the uh, the CD1 uh, cytochrome oxidase contains there are two types of hemes are present in this not one heme just like in the dinuclear center two ions are the di ion center two ions are there in this particular reductase the two hemes are there. So, one of the heme is the C type of the heme and the other heme is the D type of the heme 
and it is the C type of the heme which is involved in the electron transfer, it is the D type of the heme that is involved in the catalysis of this. Because you require electron transfer, you require to remove one of the O and you require to make the NO. So, the, the once it is reduced, the reduced D heme uh, binds to nitrite because it is a catalytic center and converts into the product. And whereas, the cytochrome C nitrite reductase is a multi heme enzyme that will convert the nitrite to ammonia and this we will see in as the next example. So, the active side of the ion is bound to the protoporphyrin 9 uh, okay, and that is covalently linked to the enzyme proteins. Okay, so, you can see that uh, they are there are the, uh, uh, the two types of ion let us look uh, into this one uh, the two types of hemes one is the C heme type C heme C we already studied and then heme D type uh, which has a different kind of a groups. So, here you have a reactivity is going on uh, catalytic and here only electron. C heme is involved in the electron transfer while D heme is involved in the catalytic reaction. Okay. So, you can see that uh, this we will come back to that the nitrite, nitrite is bonded there are two histidines are there involvement of that and uh, uh, this is the bound site with the D and these are the uh, other residues providing the electron transfer etcetera. So, we will look at the detail in the in the different context in the next slide there are two uh, histidines are uh, involved in this particular thing uh, and uh, in the uh, conversion of nitrite to NO. So, it is the uh, the heme D 1 site the histidine 327 and the histidine 369 are absolutely essential for substrate binding and also to ensure the catalysis is conformed. And how do we know? Because if you uh, replace any of these histidines and both the histidines by other residues or by which is called mutation no reactivity, no uh, the, the conversion and release is not happening. Primarily because in such cases the conversion takes place to some extent, but release will not take place. Okay. So, there are some two distal histidines also play important role uh, in catalysis and uh, therefore, uh, all these things are important for these uh, complex formation binding and then conversion. The, so, if you look at the whole uh, enzymes and the mutant reactivity, there is some new side chain in the active site which is involved which is important and there is some uh, the tyrosine uh, the density uh, is reduced in that it just moves uh, with the end terminal arm. So, that means, there is some protein conformational change happening and there is also some topological changes in the uh, in the C design domain. So, that means, there is electron transfer happening in this area during the electron transfer we have already seen that the reorganization occurs and that is what we So, uh, this whole thing. So, the two invariants uh, histidine plays a very crucial role uh, in the reactive activity and structural organization there are two things are there. So, there is a structural organization reorganization where the electron transfer and uh, uh, in, the, in the other case we have uh, the binding and reactivity these are the two essential aspects of it. So, now uh, you can see the structure the cytochrome C D 1 in the oxidized form uh, there is a helical C type. Uh, so, you can see these are all the helices uh, and there is a C type this is a C type and this is sitting on the top and the D 1 is sitting like uh, the 8 bladded propeller uh, heme binding ones here there is one and there are the propellers. So, the C part of it and the D part of it and they are one over the other. Okay. Uh, so, has uh, the C has got uh, histidine 17 and uh, histidine 19 as the actual ligand which you cannot see so much over here and the D case you have uh, uh, 200 and tyrosine 25 uh, close by. So, the overall structure of the of a mutant when you look at the uh, tyrosine to the uh, cysteine variant is essentially identical to that of the wild type enzyme with small difference only in the vicinity of the mutant case. So, histidine histidine coordination the heme C is obviously retained there. So, uh, the, but 
the D1 heme is actually ligated by 100 and, and when you make the mutation because you are changing the, uh, the tyrosine and, the, and then it picks up in the solution the sulphate moiety. So, that means we can understand that this group this metal center has an anion kind of a affinity. So, we will see more details of this enzyme cytochrome C oxidase uh, for the nitrite reductase uh, in the next class and we will also look at uh, the continuation of that going from nitrite to ammonia too. Uh, thank you very much.